This is uh, another in the series on iterative solutions of equations with TK Solver. In this session, we'll go into a little bit more detail on uh, how the iterative solver works in uh, solving sets of simultaneous equations. We saw before that if we provided uh, a particular configuration to TK, that iterative solution was required. And by giving it an initial guess for one of the variables, it iterated uh, to a solution. Let's go ahead now and uh, see exactly what TK Solver was doing to solve this problem. We'll be able to use this knowledge uh, for further problem solving down the road. That value of 3, when it was guessed, generated an error term internally. Here we see that there's an inconsistent message. It points at the second equation right here. This is where it detected the inconsistency. The first equation was solved because the volume and the radius were known. Height was the only unknown. It was able to solve for that. In the second equation, it now knew radius, height, and slant but the equality was not true, and so it's marked inconsistent. How inconsistent? Well, we can edit in an error term. And now, when we solve, we see that the error is 8.8. .8. If we had tried a guess of 2.5, the error would have been 83. If we tried a guess of 3.5, the error would have been minus 21. So what's our goal in, uh, in an iterative solution? Well, it's to find the value that causes this error to be 0, or at least to within a tolerance close to 0. And the iterative solver uh, accomplishes this by taking very small increments on this guess variable, computing the slope of the resulting error term. In other words, as the radius changes, what is the corresponding change in the error? And it uses that to project where the next guess should be uh, that uh, would lead to a progression towards error being zero. In fact, we can use uh, TK Solver's list solve facility in order to actually see this error function. We can associate a list with the radius. We can associate a list with error. We will fill up the radius list with values going from, say, 2 up to 8.5 in steps of 0.01. We now have a radius list full of these values. Now when we solve by list solving, the error list is also filled. So scrolling through that, when we find the point at which the error changes from positive to negative, uh, there's a zero in between. And so that would be the point at which a solution occurs. And continuing to look, it appears there's another solution here between the, uh, these two elements. Let's go ahead and plot that once. We'll create a plot. We'll call it error, and the plot will have radius on the x-axis list, error on the y-axis list, and we'll also add a grid so that we can see where it crosses the, the zero. I'll go ahead and plot it. And here's the plot showing 
where the solutions are. First solution right here, and the second solution down here. Now, depending on where we guess, you can see the slope of this error function. If we were to guess, say, anywhere in this region, the iterative solver would quickly converge to this root. If we were to guess somewhere over in this region, the iterative solver would climb to find the second root. So this gives you a graphical illustration of uh, how your choice of guesses can result in uh, a different solution when there are multiple solutions possible. Keep that in mind as you work with TK and the iterative solver. Uh, also, just to close the loop here, if we make the error term zero, it's as if we've edited out the error term in that rule. And if I go ahead and make an initial guess, we see that it comes up with the solution. I'll then pull that back over to the input field. I'll blank out the error again, and we'll see exactly how close we got right on the money, it says. So that solution uh, results in error being zero. And that ends this discussion on iterative solutions with TK Solver. Uh, we will continue in a future one with uh, the use of root binders from the TK Solver library.